Are you saying hello to everybody? It is a saying hello to you all. Good morning everyone. I hope you're all well. Happy Easter. Today is Easter Sunday. And yes, you may have guessed. I know. Oh, now he has to get in the video. And yes. Am I talking to someone that isn't needy? Can I talk to the viewers first and then I'll talk to you? I've just been playing with you for the last five minutes. <laughs> He's giving me a row. What? What are you saying? <laughs> Can I please get peace? <laughs> anyway. <laughs> he has to get the last word done. As you may have gathered, I have not done a weekend vlog. I did say, I promised, well, I promised I was going to try to do a weekend vlog for the Easter weekend. <laughs> I've just been playing with that pig for the last five minutes. And I did honestly, oh, the light, I did honestly try to vlog the weekend. I was fully intending to, but, <laughs> do you mind? But the um, last week just went from bad to worse and my head just was not in the right place to be vlogging on Friday. Um, <clears throat> yes, let me fill you in on what happened. Really, Hades? So, as you know, Brooke was away sailing last week and she was loving it, but of course I was worried, as you do. <laughs> When she was getting in touch, she was saying how bad the, not the weather as much, but the how rough it was and that they were almost on their side a lot. And yeah, that's exciting, but it's worrying for parents as well. So I was kind of worrying about her a wee bit. And then on Thursday, the ferries here, like our local ferry was off because the water was too choppy. And I'm like, oh my God, that's a decent sized ferry. And they're in a yacht. Um, so yeah, I was worrying a wee bit about that. I was also worrying about Granny Annie, who, as you may know, was in the hospital. She had been admitted on the Tuesday. Um, on Thursday morning, she messaged me to say that she was getting home, which I was really happy about. But I was also worried because I didn't know if she was actually ready to be home or not. So I was sitting just sort of thinking about that. And I got the phone call that every parent dreads. Abby phoned and when I answered, she was hysterical, she was screaming, she was crying and I could not make out a word she was saying. And you know that way the adrenaline hits you, I felt instantly sick, I was panicking and you know, everything goes through your mind. Couldn't make out anything she was saying, I'm saying, calm down and talk to me, what is it? And I heard her saying, I've crashed the car and I thought, oh my God, right. And I'm saying, right, okay, are you okay? Are you hurt? Are you hurt? And she said, I don't think so. I don't think so. But the car's a mess. The car's a mess. I'm not going to drive again. And she was really, really hysterical. And I'm like, Brooke, eh, Abby, please calm down. I need you to talk to me. What's happened? Are you okay? I think I'm okay. Is the other person okay? I think so, but it's my fault. It's my fault. And she started like that. And I'm like, Abby, that doesn't matter. We can worry about that later on. Let's just establish, A, that you're you're okay, the other person or people are okay, and where you are. Thankfully, Jack was here. He just came back around with the dogs. And I had it on loudspeaker, so he heard what was going on. So while I was talking to her, he was throwing his shoes on and grabbing the car keys. And we established it was thankfully just around the corner from her work. And um, I managed to get her to calm down slightly. When she said that she was okay and that she thought the other people were okay, that calmed me down even more and I was trying to just say to her, look, nothing else matters, all that matters is you're okay, your dad's on his way, what's happening? And I heard somebody else saying, I'll phone the police and I'm like, oh my God. So uh, she went, right, okay, I'm going to have to go, I'm going to have to phone my work. Right, now, all I can say is, thank God for the people at Abby's work because 
She, I've said it before, she's working with a brilliant bunch of people. They really are good and she works in a garage. So um, it's like a showroom and garage. So I said, right, okay, keep me informed. So about five, ten minutes later, I got a phone call. It was her phone, so I thought it was her, but it was her boss, her manager that was on the phone. She went, I'm just letting you know. Oh, in fact, no, before all that, I, when Abby was calming down, I said, do you want me to talk to the other person? Yeah, yeah. So I spoke to him and I said, I'm really sorry about this. Are you okay? And he said, yeah, I'm fine. And I thought, he sounds calm. He sounds okay. So that's at least half the battle because if he was being like horrible about it, that would have made things worse. Um, so he seemed okay. Um, so yeah, our manager phoned me and said, she's in here with us we've made her a hot chocolate she's okay she's upset she's shooken up but she's fine she's she's not hurt that we can see i went right okay and she said so and so is away sorting the car um so don't worry about that side of it it's all okay and you know that way that i just went from here to here it was like oh, knowing that it was in hand because the one thing you don't teach people when you're teaching them how to drive and all the rest of it. And even when you're doing your test, nobody ever thinks to say, if you get into an accident, this is what you do. You know, we'd never said to her, if you have an accident, do this. So she was like, what do I do? And Pat, the first thing she did was phone me. So thankfully the people from Abby's work were up at the car, sweeping the road, moving Abby's car, because it was in the middle of the road, moving that out of the way. Um, and... Jack got in, she said to me, so Abby's here, we've tried to phone her dad, but he's not answering. I went, right, I'll try and get him, because he was on his way. Um, I said, I'll try and get him. And she said, uh, we'll keep you informed, but everything is okay. And I was like, oh, thank God. So I tried to phone Jack, and it was ringing out, and he has got a hands-free kit for answering the phone. And then I realised his phone was in the kitchen. It went in such a hurry, he didn't have his phone. So I was sitting here not having a clue what was going on. Just, you know, that way you're like, what do I do? What do I do? I was like a caged tiger just, just pacing back and forward in my wheelchair. What do I do? What's the best thing to do? How can I help? I, you know, feeling really useless. I couldn't do anything. I was here. I didn't know what was going on. Eventually, Jack phoned me from Abby's phone and said that he was there. She was okay. The car's a right off. And it had turned out that where the accident happened, it is a really bad junction. I always hated that junction when I was driving. It's a crossroads, so it goes straight on and straight across. But because it's a sort of side street, people just park right up to the corner on all sides of the roads. So you can't see, you're practically in the middle of the road before you can see if anything's coming. So basically Abby had got there and she looked and looked, there was nothing coming. She went and suddenly there was something there and she smacked in him. So it was her fault. Um, you know, she said that, you know, it was my fault. But it wasn't, she wasn't being careless or reckless. She genuinely thought there wasn't anything coming. So... Uh, Jack sent me a photo of her car, which I'll put on the screen for you now, and that's when I got upset, because, oh, see, I'm getting upset again now. I think it was a relief knowing that she was okay, and a car's just a piece of metal, everybody knows that. That can be dealt with, it's the humans that are the important thing. But when I saw the car, I thought back to when we first got it and how excited she was, how much she loved going out, practicing driving in it, how when she'd passed her test only a week before, she was so excited because she was going to be doing this, that and the next thing. And I thought, it's not just her car that's crushed up, it's her hopes and dreams because she just went out and got a second job in a bar because she hadn't done it before because of the hours. There was, there's no busy past 10 o'clock at night through the week and 11 o'clock at the weekend. Um, so it was like, I can't believe that's just happened on top of everything else. So anyway, uh, Jack got Abby to phone the insurance. He said, I'm not doing it, it's your car, you phone them. So um, she phoned them and 
they said, right, we'll get somebody to come and get the car um, and we'll get in touch with you once we've got evaluation and everything. So that was fine. Um, and when I saw her, I felt a lot better. <laughs> I really did. I was so grateful for her work though, especially her manager for doing what she did. Abby said that as soon as she phoned her, of course she was still really upset. Um, her boss ran round, it's two minutes away, and she said she could see her boss coming. It was like Superman coming to the rescue, running round. And she took her and everything, and she said that the, the guys in the actual garage part of it were so good. Um, and when she'd calmed down and everything, our boss had said to her, look, it happens. And they all started telling their stories of what happened with them. And a lot of them, you know, they were only a week, two weeks into passing their test. And so I think that made her feel a wee bit better, you know, that because she felt, you know, I can't believe I've done this. Um, so that made her feel a bit better. And then her boss had, and she's like, but I'm not going to drive again. My insurance was, I mean, her insurance was extortionate anyway. It's going to double at least. Um, and she went, I'm not going to get a car. I'm not going to get insurance. And her boss went, right, first of all, she had been driving one of the company cars um, just a few days before it, actually. Her manager had said, I'm going to take you out so that you get used to these cars so that if you're needing to drop it at a customer or whatever, you can go and, I don't think she would be doing that, but whatever it was for, she went, I'll get you out in the car so you're used to driving them. As soon as she had her licence, they were doing it. And Abby said the ironic thing was when she went back into the office, the congratulations balloon was still on her desk for passing her test. Um, um, I think you'll find this is a blanket off the couch. This is not Hades blanket. Such a wee monkey today, he's obviously bored. Right, leave it just now, go and get a toy. Go and get your pig. Hades, no, no, that's not yours. Go and get your blanket or your toy. <laughs> um, so yeah, our boss said to her, look, next week, as soon as you're feeling okay, we're going out in the car. We're going out in one of the wee goes, and you're going to get back behind the wheel because you know what it's like, the longer you leave it after you've had an accident, the harder it is. Um, so I was so grateful that she'd said that to her as well. And they also said to the guy who deals with the used cars, keep your eye out for any good deals that are coming in um, so that if there's a good car, we can look at buying that. So it's so lucky that she's working there. Honestly, I, I can't tell you how good it is. So. Later on, once everything had calmed down, we were needing to go to Asda. So I went in and I got a card and a bunch of flowers for our manager because I thought I can't explain to her in words how grateful I am for everything that she did. I mean, she's only been there since January. You know, it's only about less, less than three months um, and they've been so good with her. So I did that. Abby got because obviously she got sent home from her work. <laughs> she wasn't going to be working the rest of the day. Um, so she got all checked out and she was fine. So we went to Asda. She got chocolates and a card for everybody else at her work and I wanted to get it just for her manager. Um, so on the way back home, we actually went in and I saw her manager and I said, thank you so much. And uh, Abby went in and everybody was going right up to her and giving her hugs. Are you okay? You know, um, and... I said, ah, she's fine just now. I said, but, you know, you can give it a couple of days and then slag her. And we were laughing because by this point, Abby was calm enough to see the funny side of it. And would you believe when we got in the car, the first song that was playing, Highway to Hell. <laughs> I'm not kidding you. And Abby went, seriously? I know. And then the next thing, there was an advert. Um, Have you had an accident away from home and not sure what to do? I'm like, oh my God, what is the universe telling us? Yes, I see the pig. Right, leave it. Leave it. It's here. It just ran away down the hall looking for it. Um, yeah, so by that time she was sort of seeing the funny side of it. And when we went into Asda, everything that she picked up was bashed. And she's like, what is going on today? So, yeah. She is okay. They told her not to go in on Friday. And 
her neck was sore, but she was fine. Like her neck was stiff and sore, but nothing major. And I said to her, look, go in. You're okay. You're well enough to go in. And because it was Good Friday, there wasn't a lot on anyway. I said, so show well in, go in, tell them, you know, let them see you're not wanting to take the easy way out. You're going to go if you can. And then if they want to send you home early, they can. Um, so that's what she did and I think they were really, they were surprised to see her but quite pleased as well so that was good and she did get away about three o'clock, we picked her up um, because on Friday we had to go and pick Brooke up um, from her sailing so we went and I did actually take a little bit of footage when she was, when she came off the boat I couldn't get right along to where it was so Jack and Hades actually stood waiting for her because I'd said to her on the Thursday, are you looking forward to coming home? She'd say, I'm missing Hades. So we had the dogs with us. So Jack took Hades out to the gate thing to meet her. And um, yeah, so I took this bit of footage. There's Hades waiting for her. <laughs> <laughs> There's some lovely boats here. It's the first time I've been to this marina. I can hear her shouting, puppy! She must be coming. Jack's trying to point her out. He's like, look at these. No, oh, see, because of the light, I don't think I'm going to get it very well. Oh my goodness, I didn't recognise her because she's got her hair in a ponytail. <laughs> God, I don't know how long it is since I've had seen her with her hair in a ponytail. Look, oh, she's so happy to see Hades. Oh! <laughs> well, there you are! How'd they go? Look at them all! Oh my god, I want to see her! I want to see Brooke! Look at the tails! That's happy puppies! That's happy puppies! He's been whining outside your door for nights now! <laughs> so when she got in the car she was full of stories, absolutely loved it, um, good things, bad things, but even the bad things she seemed to like. I'll let her tell you some of the stories, if not today it might be another day because you know what she's like, she has to be in the mood for telling you something. She got a certificate as well so I'll let her show you that. Um, so yeah, she had an absolute ball, but on Friday my mum still really wasn't well, she was, she can't eat. She had a sip of water and it made her, it, she was in agony and I was like, oh my God. Um, so yeah, it wasn't great. Yesterday, Granny Annie was a bit better. Brooke slept most of the day because she was like, I can't wait to get on a proper mattress and in a bed that doesn't sway, <laughs> doesn't rock all the time. Um, and Abby was busy doing bits and pieces in her room, getting her room tidy. So yeah. It has been one hell of a week and I have to say I will be so glad when today's finished and March is over with because every year something happens in March. I'm not going to go into it in this video but I think what I'm going to do, I've not got a specific video for Wednesday's crafting chat so I'm going to do just do some diamond painting and chat to you all about the March curse, <laughs> why I think March is cursed for us. Um, so if you're interested in that, yeah, watch that video. Even if you're not interested in actual diamond painting, you can listen to me telling you the story of why I hate March and why next year I'm determined to hibernate through March. I thought we broke the curse this year because right at the start we won that competition. I thought, yay, good things are happening this month. But no, it was saving it all for the last week. Anyway, sorry about that. I know I've just rabbited. Rabbit eat, that's a new word. Haberdon. Ah, rabbit eat. <laughs> it's Easter Sunday. Maybe that's why I thought of that. Um, I've habered on for 20 minutes. I'm sorry if this is going to be a long video, but I just had to get it all out there. I had to let you know what's happened, why I'm not doing a weekend vlog, and why I've been stressed to the max. And to be honest, I am feeling a wee bit down. Um, not as down as I would have been if I wasn't on this diet, I don't think, because my head's in a much better place. And... Even on Thursday when all this happened, we went to Asda, Jack's like, I'm getting a bottle of wine to relax. And I was like, I'm going to get chocolate. And then I went, actually, I don't want chocolate. I mean, that is my go-to when I'm stressed. Usually if I'm on a diet, it's 
any excuse for chocolate and that would have been the perfect excuse and I was like I really want something sweet but when I actually pictured myself putting chocolate in my mouth I thought I don't want it so what I ended up doing instead was getting the new flavour of iron brew the raspberry ripple I got a pack of cans of that because I've been desperate to try it since we saw it last week I think and um but because not so much my diet but my health I'm, I'm just on water now and I, I thought I'm not drinking it just for the sake of it but because I needed something sweet I thought on Thursday I thought that's a good way to get the sweet fix without affecting my diet because it's still sugar free it's full of crap it's full of horrible sweeteners but at least it gave me that sweet fix and it worked it hit the spot it was delicious I have to say it was so good and I did try Jack had got the cans of the wild berry crush or something iron brew and I wasn't very keen on that but I did enjoy it. I had three cans of the other one and then I went straight back to my water again no bother so that was good that was definitely a plus and today being Easter Sunday I'm not even thinking about Easter eggs oh I better put the girls ones out eh <laughs> I've not done that yet Easter's so different now Easter used to be such a big deal Easter day because you know there was always the the treasure hunt, the egg hunt in the morning, there was always little clues, rhyming clues that they had to find out where they were going next and they would find an egg and another clue and then they'd find an egg and another clue and eventually it would lead them to where all their eggs were. That was the days when they got loads of Easter eggs because they were cheap <laughs> and because they were really into chocolate and that's what Easter was about when you were a kid. Um, and then we would boil eggs, hard boil eggs and decorate them and then go somewhere nice to a big hill and roll them down the hill and whoever's egg cracked last was the winner. You know that? Loved it. And it's just not the same without all that now. Although, it's just on hold because you never know. I might get grandkids at some point and if so, it'll all, all those traditions will come back out. But at the moment, it's a bit meh. Okay, it's Easter Sunday and plus... The clocks went forward through the night as well and you're like, I can't remember ever in my lifetime the clocks going forward the same time as Easter Day. Just never. It's so early this year, it's crazy. That's why it crept up on me. Anyway, I'm going to go just now. I'm going to go and put their stuff out and I'll show you what they've got. So here we go. This is what Abby has got. I'm not going to actually mention anything about it just now because they're still in bed so they've not seen it yet. That is Abby's. I will explain later. And uh, that is Brooks again. I will explain later once they get it. Um, let me show you the bits that I finished for Easter. So in the last vlog, that frame there had been a Valentine's frame and I repurposed it. So it's now a Happy Easter frame. And it's got the little resin bunny on the front that I made with the carrot. It's got a little chick. It's got the two little resin pendants that I made that looked like Easter eggs. <laughs> So yeah, I made that and I made this little bunny and I made him black and white. So that's the white side and then look, <laughs> you can turn them around and they can be black. Now I've only just unmoulded it so it needs to be properly sanded down and stuff, get the overpour off it. But it's quite nice when you see it that way or that way. <laughs> um, I also coated this little dude. So he's nice and shiny now, he's not matte anymore. I used the silicon stuff, not silicon, what was it called? Latex stuff on the back to stop any of the overpour resin sticking to it and it worked great. This is the first time I've ever coated anything like this so big and yeah, it was good. So, But I still don't know whether to make them black at the back. Look at the difference. I think I might. I might paint them black at the back, we'll see. Um, and I also made this little Mickey shaker. The The main bit, like this bit, had already been made. I just hadn't got around to putting stuff inside it and things. But I don't know what's going on here. I don't know if some resin maybe got in because all the sequins are stuck there. <laughs> um, it's a dry shaker rather than a wet shaker because wet shakers just leak and make a mess. So, yay. Um, so there's that. I'm going to turn that into a magnet, I think. And wait till you see this. Look at my dragon, the welcome. That was a, a mould that I got from Timu recently and I think he has turned out fab. Look at him. Isn't he so cute? 
So I need to decide what I'm going to do with him. But yeah, I love him. Love, love, love him. Anyway, and having spoken about my diet, I've not told you what my results were, have I? So after my 30 days, but there was two days off, remember, for the competition thing. I was completely off it on the Friday and the Saturday. I was eating everything and drinking alcohol and all sorts of things. But after the 30 days, I had lost half a stone, so seven pounds, which isn't, isn't brilliant, but I'm not really going by the numbers on the scales. I've done that so often in my life. And I know that there's so many things that can affect that. So yeah, it's good that I've lost half a stone. It's not the be all and end all. The measurements though, every area that I measured have gone down in centimetres, which is fab. I have lost eight centimetres of my muffin top, you know, the bit that hangs over your tra your jeans. I've lost eight centimetres round there and 11 centimetres off my belly. Wow. Um, so... I'm really, really happy with that. Plus the fact that my head's in a much better place. Yeah, I'm feeling down just now, but I would have been a lot better. I reckon I would have been in my bed just crying. No exaggeration if I hadn't been on this diet. Um, and my head's a lot clearer and yeah, really happy. So I am going to carry on doing it for the next 30 days and then maybe the next 30 days. I'm not saying forever because nobody knows forever. But right now, I'm really happy on it. I'm going to head off just now and I'll come back to you once the girls are up and you can see them getting their Easter. Hello. Hello. Happy Easter. Yeah. These are puppies. Is it Easter? Yeah, it's Easter. Is it Easter? Yay! <laughs> Yay! First Easter with us. Yeah. Isn't it? Easter Bunny didn't come to the puppy so. Oh. Look at Clyde. He's like, what do you mean? Oh, Guess what one's mean. yours? Oh, one. <laughs> Yum. Yum. Thank you very much. Not a huge amount because, well, we know why. <laughs> Originally it was because we were helping you with the insurance. Now it's because we've got to help you with, okay, let's not go there. But you still, you got your big one and your wee one. I didn't realise they were both caramel. <laughs> <laughs> it, now, um, it now tells you when someone's added your TikTok to their favourites. What does it? And Em added my TikTok to her favourites. Which one? The one with the car? Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah, so you did say that you wanted savoury as well as sweet. Yes. So you got your knickknacks and your monster one. Did you realise Brooke's up? Go get her. Boom. Yay! <laughs> happy Easter, Brick. <laughs> you saying happy Easter, Brick? <laughs> Doggies don't eat <like> chocolate. <laughs> That's your wee pile there, and you know why it's a wee pile, don't you? <laughs> You got your earphones at last, earbuds. I just won't hop. I know. Not a lot of eggs, obviously. But then, you don't need a lot of eggs now, you're older. You're not going on an egg hunt anymore. <laughs> so, once you come to, you can come through and tell everybody about your sailing trip. Right. What? <laughs> Easter. <gasps> Easter. Easter. No Easter for Hades. Didn't even think to get doggy Easter eggs actually. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Good afternoon. I just thought I would come on and chat to you because, um, yeah, it's been a few hours since I spoke to you last. So as you saw, the girls got their Easter. I just wanted to explain it. Now, I wasn't going to be spending a lot on their Easter this year anyway because A, we've not got the money and B, they're too old now. So I told them they would get one normal sized egg and one small egg each and then they could basically choose a gift rather than all chocolate. So Brooke wanted some wireless earbuds so I got her them. So that's why she only had two little Easter eggs and the earbuds. Now Abby, she's more a savoury person than sweet anyway so she had said look just 
those Easter eggs are fine, but then get me like my favourite crisps or that sort of thing. So I ended up getting her the eggs and the big packet of Monster Munch, big packet of knickknacks and a packet of the Aero Bubbles because she quite likes them as well. So the reason she didn't get anything more expensive like the earbuds are that we were planning to give her money towards her, or we were going to pay for her first month's insurance. My mum had paid the deposit the first month she'd been coming up and we were going to pay that. Um, but obviously with the car situation now, we don't know what's going to be happening. We don't know by the time the car is valued and the excess is taken off and all the rest of it, whether um, and the outstanding policy amount is taken off. There might not be any money left and we might actually need to pay to it. We don't know yet. Um, if there is anything left at all, it will be pennies. So... Yeah, we're really not expecting anything like that. But because of the Easter holiday, it's going to take longer. Abby's work had said that to save them hanging about for recovery, they had um, they just moved the car down to the garage and arranged for it to be pick up, picked up there, which was good. So the guy that picked it up basically said it was going to their holding place in Dumbarton that night, but then the next day it was getting moved to can't remember where, Whitburn or somewhere like that, where the actual insurance garage is. So, yeah, we were thinking, oh, good, it won't take long to hear, but then we forgot about the Easter holiday. So, yeah, um, so we'll wait and see. But that's why they got what they did. And those little Easter eggs, the caramel nibbles, they were down to 60 pence. And as the when I got them, they should have been 125 and they had them down to 60 pence, but it was for a limited time only. And I was like, I'll take them. <laughs> Quite handy. Um, so yeah, that's why they got what they got. Granny Annie is feeling better today. She's not 100%, but she's managed to have a shower. She's managed to eat something and not have any pain. So it's definitely a sign that she's moving in the right direction. She's not well enough to come in and say hello to you all yet, but as soon as she is, I will get her for you. Um, so yeah, that's that. All I've been doing today is <laughs> Granny Annie wanted me to make her a thank you card for someone. And it's taken me hours because I just couldn't get it right. Cards are my least favourite thing to make, I have to say. I was doing it with the cricket, but oh, it was a pain. Anyway, it's done now. Um, we should have been down at Pembrey this weekend. This was the first leg of the Fur Nations down in Wales. And we love that one. We really do. It's such a nice area and it's always a really good atmosphere right at the beach. Um, but... And we were actually planning to go this year. We've not been the last couple of years. But then with different things happening money-wise, we just couldn't afford it. So, yeah, um, good luck to Team Scotland. I've not heard how they're done yet, um, but I will find out. We are going to Strathallan in a few weeks' time, which is not part of the Fur Nations, but it is always a really good weekend up there at Strathallan Castle. Um, so, yeah, I will vlog that for you. We're so looking forward to it. We've not been at any canny cross for well over a year. Jack is now training Hades up and he's doing well. So he's now running with Hades and Clyde. He was retiring Willa because she was so overweight and her legs were getting stiff and things. But she's losing weight and she's still showing willing when he's getting his getting the harnesses and everything on. She's at the door looking at him with her tail wagging, thinking she's going. So he's thinking that we'll wait and see how it goes. He might try and do some training sessions with her. And if she's okay, he might run her in the short course. Whereas Clyde and Hades will be doing the long course. So we'll wait and see. But that's all going well. Um, but that's all I've got to update you with at the moment. Brooke has unpacked her stuff from sailing and that's getting washed. But that's as much as I've seen of her today. <laughs> so I think we'll probably wait and show you her certificate and things the next time that she's um, able and wanting to. I think she's still exhausted. Abby's watching the football just now in her room. And yeah, that's all we're up to. So I'm going to head off just now. I won't end the vlog quite yet. I'll wait and see just in case anything else interesting happens. But if not, I'll see you very shortly to end the vlog. I finished my wee bunny rabbit. I did put black on them in the end. I just used the black acrylic paint marker and you can really see all the different colours coming through. I think he's really, really cute. And I put my little black and white bunny up there beside that as well. And 
I've still got my wee lamb there. <laughs> well, good evening. It's five o'clock. I've just had my dinner and I am just going to end the vlog here because nothing else has happened and nothing else is likely to happen today. The girls are quite happy. Abby was happy we won the game. Brooke is sitting playing her guitar, just enjoying being home, I think, because she's only home until a week today and then she goes back to cadet camp for a week. Um, she never stops, that girl. So, yeah, I thought I would just come on and end it. I do apologise that this hasn't been a nice upbeat Easter vlog, but this is my life, folks, and you know I like to tell it how it is. Um, yeah, I've been a bit of a Debbie Downer. I'm sorry about that, but it, it was just a bad week. And I just wanted to let you know what had happened because I know that you were all so excited for Abby as well, passing her test and then getting the other job. By the way, she's going to be keeping that job on. <laughs> she needs the money more than ever now because she's saving for a new car and insurance. Between Jack and my dad, they're going to work out picking her up when there's no buses on so that she can still do it because, uh, yeah, she needs the money. And she's already made a plan that she's going to be putting X amount aside every month. So it's good. She's starting to look positively at it as well. And uh, yeah, hopefully it won't be too long before she's back behind the wheel again. But uh, yeah, I just wanted to let you know what was going on. I am going to end it just now so that I can get this edited and uploaded because tomorrow we're going out again. Um, so I will vlog that. Um, I won't tell you in much about it just now, but I will vlog it, so I'll let you know in the morning what it is we are doing. Um, so yeah, I do apologise that it's been a bit of a Debbie Downer vlog, but I'm okay. We're all okay. That's what my... All that matters is Abby's fine. Um, the other people, um, I meant to say, the driver, he was fine. The, his passenger... They were an elderly couple and his passenger was complaining of back pain. So they phoned an ambulance for her and uh, were told it would be three to five hours before the ambulance would get there because she was breathing and there was no blood. Yeah. So actually Abby's work offered to get someone to run her to the hospital, which I thought was really nice of them. They didn't have to do that, but they refused. They were getting family to do it, which is fair enough. But it was so nice of a our work to offer that anyway. Um, so <laughs> they maybe thought, no, if you all drive the way she does, we're not getting in a car with you. <laughs> um, yeah. So that is what is happening. Anyway, I hope she's okay. Um, obviously, we've not heard any more. We've not got their details or anything, but hopefully she will be fine. Right, I'm going to head off just now. Um, if you did by any chance enjoy this, please do hit the thumbs up button. Um, talk to me in the comments below. I really appreciate all your support and so does Abby. Please do subscribe if you haven't already. Not all my vlogs are doom and gloom like this. And remember to watch on Wednesday the Crafting Chat if you want to know about the Curse of March. Ooh! <laughs> Right, I'm going to go everyone. Thanks very much. I'll see you in our next one.